Hello everyone and welcome to the second video of the Power BI series. My name is Jose Almeida and in this video I'm going to show you how to refresh the model we built in the previous video with new data. Not there are many different ways to refresh data and the techniques will depend on the particularities of the scenarios and the data source types. Next I will cover some of the most common situations I've came across and that will give you a good basis to understand the process before we dive into more complex scenarios. So, if you remember in the previous video, we create the report with sales from September to November. The total sales sum 445,000 US dollars, there are two salespersons, four shop locations, and each shop sells four different products. Now that we have received December sale figures, we want to bring them to our model. But we don't want to have to go across all the work we did before. Here is another moment where Power BI stands out by the agility and speed to automate recurring tasks such as refreshing data. As a first scenario, let's assume we have received the December sales in a separate Excel file. Inspecting the file content, we can see it has the same structure as the previous, as the data came from the same ARP system. Although, this month we have a new shop in Chicago and a new salesperson, Claire. Interesting. Uh, let's see if the new attributes will cause us any trouble. Okay, now we want to append December data to the previous months. Let's open the file with sales from September to November and in a good old-fashioned way, copy and paste December data in the bottom of the file. Does this process sound familiar to you? Luckily, we only have a few rows. We know what can happen when we are working with hundreds of thousands of rows in Excel. But let's stick to it for now. Next, we are going to rename the sales file, as now it includes December as well. Returning to the report, we are going to select Refresh and Error. Power BI could not find the file. Oh no. The reason, we have been changed the data source name, but we didn't notice Power BI of it. Luckily, this error is easy to troubleshooting. Let me show you all. Simplistically, Power BI can be defined as the result of the fusion of three other Microsoft tools in one. These are Power View, Power Pivot, and Power Query. And this is the case where the result is bigger than the sum of its parts. At this point, we are going to switch to the Power Query Editor. Select Edit Queries and it will send us to the Power Query Editor area. Note, we're still inside the sales report. This area is in the background of our model and you can move freely from one to other with no problem. Power Query is a powerful ATL tool. It means extract, transform and load data. You can find it integrated in Excel 2016 or as an add-in from the previous Excel versions. On Excel 2016, go to the data ribbon and in the Power Query is now called Get and Transform Data. Do you remember the Get Data that is in Power BI? This is the same function, but in Excel. Okay, but let's go back to our Power BI model. Wait, but there is a sales table in the query editor. Where is this coming from? You can check the source of the data selecting data source settings. Oh, can you see? The data displayed is linked to the file that doesn't exist anymore because we rename it. So click change source and browse for the new file. You will need to close the Excel file first. Let's try it again. Select the file and click OK. Click Refresh Preview. Scroll down and there it is. December cells are now loaded. Next, click Close and Apply to go back to the report view and apply the query steps. And Boom! All visuals are now showing December data. The new sales, the new salesperson, the new shop location. Fantastic! Do you see how everything was automatic, updated, and didn't require any intervention for our side? This is awesome. Okay, so let me go back to the query editor. I want to show you another way that you can change the data source. So in the right panel you have the query settings and you have the apply steps. Here is where all the ATL steps are recorded. The first step 
its source and selecting a small gear you can browse uh, the file location now let me ask you what about next month when January sales be available? Do you want to go across all these steps again? Renaming the file, changing the source? I don't think so. So my suggestion is to name our data source file with a fixed name such as db underscore sales. For example, you can name it whatever you want, but my suggestion is to give uh, the files a meaningful name. Avoid rename the files after be loaded. Do not use spaces or special characters and do not change anything directly in the file. Doing it will mitigate the issues with the connections and Power BI will always know where our file is located. Finally, do not forget to change the, the name report to December and you're done. I really hope you have enjoyed this video and that it would help you to start building our own model. There are tons of other things to talk about and every month new amazing features are released. In the next video, I will explain how to append multiple files using Power Query Editor. If you have any question about this video, please leave a comment or drop me an email. You will find my contacts below. You can also subscribe to the channel to receive the latest videos and share it with people that would like to know. Thanks for watching, keep tuned and I hope to see you soon.